Hello and welcome to another edition of UNC Hoops Talk. Uh, I am your host, Dan DeWitt, and uh, that's right, this is our recruiting podcast, and we got a very special, special uh, guest here. All right, we got Ross Martin from uh, Carolina Blue, the, the 247 Sports uh, affiliate for North Carolina. Uh, but so that I don't mess anything up, Ross, I'll let you introduce yourself, even though you're becoming a regular uh, appear here on the podcast. Uh, go ahead and, and plug yourself. Yeah, what's going on, Dan? Uh, my name is Ross Martin. Um, I'm the, you know, the writer for CarolinaBlue.com, which is the UNC site for 247sports.com. Follow me on Twitter at boss underscore Martin 247. That's B-O-S-S underscore Martin 247. Um, I cover football, basketball, and recruiting for both sports. And I recently moved to Chapel Hill. So I'm on the ground here um, at UNC covering, um, you know, the, the football and basketball beat along with, with doing a lot of recruiting, reporting, and interviews, and things like that. All right, we're, and we're happy to have you. Uh, I'm, I'm always happy to talk to you. I've got the pleasure to meet you at a game last year. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're excited. Let's, let's uh, jump right in. And I will, I'll put your Twitter and uh, the, the, the URL to the site and all that in the description. And anything we talk about that uh, you got a link for, get it to me, and, and everybody can get that uh, in the description below the video or the podcast, wherever you're listening this, to this. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, quickly, obviously this is a basketball podcast. Everybody that's been listening to this knows that. Um, but we're going to start, uh, because football season is only a week and a half away, two weeks away, something okay. like that. Two weeks from today. Two weeks from today. So we, we got to hit on a little bit of football in, it, because it's in the season, and, and obviously it's your job. So, um, yeah, let's just talk real quickly about football. Um, hit on any – big recruits that we have coming in as freshmen this year uh, and kind of the impact players in this year for people to watch out for? Uh, yeah, we'll start with some freshmen uh, that, that could have an impact. I think uh, on defense, you have a defensive tackle named Aaron Crawford, uh, which has been getting a lot of noise from, from coaches and players alike. Big, um, 6'1", 300 pound, 315 pound inside um, defensive tackle. He should get some time on the defensive line. And then along with Jalen Dalton, who was kind of the, the jewel of the 2015 recruiting class, 6'6", 280-pound defensive end, may play inside some as well. Um, a guy from Winston-Salem area, um, he could see some time as well. And then also on defense, you have safety J.K. Britt, a guy to watch out uh, as a, as a and then secondary. And then also Mike Hughes, who I think is a name to watch out for this year, but more so in the future. Re really athletic guy. Going to be playing some cornerback and then will also be returning punts. Um, and on offense, um, Tyson Williams is probably the main name to look for. He's a freshman. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. On, a little commercial uh, there in the, in the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> on um, on offense, you have a guy named Tyson Williams out of South Carolina, and he is a um, a big and quick running back. That's about it from the freshmen. I think when you talk about this team, the 2015 team, some names that you may not know that are, I think, going to have an impact will be uh, Bug Howard at wide receiver. I think he's going to have a big season in his junior year. And then also Elijah Hood, the running back, who got some play next year. I think we'll have a really big breakout season this year. Um, the defense is going to be better. We've got Gene Chizik and a whole new coaching staff, and then um, and a lot of different players, but no real standouts on defense yet. So it's exciting. I'm excited. I think a lot of fans are excited about the new defense, the the potential for this year to be a lot better than last year, and hopefully get the ball rolling with this program. Yeah, and uh, again, I, I'm not well versed as as you are in football, but uh, obviously our offense gets a lot of the talk. Um, with the style that Fedora runs, but uh, you know it, it it has been a lot of the defense that's gotten headlines lately with the Chiswick coming in and saying he wants it all physical and um, I mean how much is that going to change the way we look this year as we did uh, compared to what we did last year? 
it's a whole different um, defensive scheme. They're running the four three now instead of the four two five. So all the defensive players have had to learn a new, um, you know, a new role. And yeah, and also they've been stressing physicality. I think you're going to see a whole new defense. You bring in a whole new coaching staff. There's a lot of people graduated. You're going to have a whole different defense. I think it's going to be a lot different. Where that impact is felt this year, probably more felt next year once they're you know they have a good year and a half in the program. Um, definitely, there's going to be some positive changes. I think there's only room to go up, so it will be better. Um, and I think you'll see some of that starting off this season. All right, and we mentioned uh, two weeks from today the opener. It's a pretty big one, uh, South Carolina. Um, I don't know, put you on the spot here, Russ. Are, can, we, can we beat or will we beat South Carolina? And where do you have us finishing uh, in our division? Yeah, I, I think UNC can definitely beat um, South Carolina. The spread right now is three points. Um, I think UNC has a great chance. Um, South Carolina, I believe, maybe starting a freshman uh, quarterback. I haven't really done my South Carolina research yet. Um, I know they have some questions on offense. Well, yeah, UNC has a great chance. I mean, you have a neutral field. Um, you have a, a senior quarterback and a very experienced offensive line. I think our offense is going to put up points uh, across the board in terms of our skill players. So I think I think South Carolina could be a, very easily be a win. You never know, though. Uh, it would be a great start um, to get that the win over the SEC team um, to start of the season. So, And then when you talk about the Coastal Division, uh, UNC was picked to finish, I want to say, fifth. Um, in that division, which isn't great, but it's always a crapshoot. Georgia Tech's supposed to be really good. Virginia Tech's always good. Um, Miami is, is pretty good this season as well. A UNC will be right up there, and, you know, you get a win over a couple of those teams, and it could be uh, come down to the Duke game and some of those other last contests to see who uh, pulls it out. But I, I think UNC has a great chance. I think they're, they're coming in as underdogs. I don't think people are expecting much out of them based on, on last year. And so I think it's a, it's a good opportunity to make some noise. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, prime time to start off the year. I believe that's one of the first games. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's like a 7 Eastern on ESPN on that Thursday, September 3rd. Yeah, I think it's 6, actually. Oh, is it six? All right, 6 Eastern. Yeah. And that's, I mean, got to be one of the first games of the year even, right? Yeah, I think it is. I think they'll probably do a 6 o'clock and, like, have a probably a 10 o'clock game that night or something. I don't know. But, yeah, ESPN, um, yeah, prime time. So fun. great exposure for the Tar Heels, and yeah, hopefully we have a good showing come out uh, with a victory over over those uh, Gamecocks and, and the old ball coach. But uh, let's transition a little bit uh, into what this podcast is all about, into basketball. Before we get into recruiting, uh, just a little update for all the listeners on the schedule. Uh, I've talked in, on past podcasts that the full non-conference schedule is out. Um, we have a few times that have been released. Uh, we open up uh, against Temple in the Veterans Classic up in Annapolis, um, Maryland, and that will be a seven Eastern game. Unfortunately, it's only on CBS Sports Network, so hopefully that one's streamed somewhere or something. I know I don't get that channel. Um, our game against, uh, was it Maryland? I think I'm, that one was out already last week or last month when I did the podcast, but we play Maryland. Uh, in the ACC Big Ten Challenge should be at least two top five teams at that time. Uh, starting off preseason, it sounds like it's, they're going to be one and two. Uh, that'll be a 9.30 Eastern game on ESPN to finish out that Tuesday night. Uh, Saturday, December 19th, in the CBS Classic, uh, the, the round robin in three years with uh, Kentucky and UCLA and uh, Ohio State. We play UCLA this year in uh, – Brooklyn in the Barclays Center. That'll be a one Eastern game on CBS on that Saturday. And then just, I believe, yesterday was announced uh, that we open up the ACC uh, play with Clemson at home at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. So the, the streak will be on, on, uh, on display or on the – what am I looking for here? On the line. On the line. There you go. Thank you. I see. I knew you were here for some reason, Ross. On the line there, the streak, it's up to, do you know what it is at right now? 51, 52, yeah. something like that? None of that, yeah. So uh, that's a 7 Eastern game on ESPN2, Wednesday, December 30th. 
Uh, and I, I just read somewhere that's like the first time we've had a conference uh, game in, in December since like 03 or 04. So um, moving it up before the new year. And then there, I'll, I'll post a link to what I have as the schedule so far. There are a few other games um, in the ACC schedule that have been announced. I think these are all the big Monday games that have been announced. We have three big Monday games this year. So it uh, kind of rounds out what we know about the schedule so far. I kind of expect the rest of the schedule to be announced anytime uh, end of August, beginning of September. So uh, just update there, look for that link. Uh, but getting into recruiting, uh, basketball recruiting more specifically. Um, yeah, well, I guess even before we get into recruiting, Ross, I'll, I'll turn it over to you for a little bit again. Uh, who are the most important returning players? Who do you expect to make, you know, big jumps? Obviously, everybody knows, you know, Marcus Page's name. Um, you know, and we, we kind of have, what, four starters returning uh, with JP's exit. But uh, who, who do you kind of expect to make the big jumps um, and kind of be X factors? Yeah, well, like you said, you have Page, you have Bryce Johnson, Kenny Meeks, um, Justin Jackson. Those are kind of the guys that are known. Obviously, I think Justin Jackson is going to make a huge jump. You kind of saw some of that at the end of last year in the ACC tournament against Virginia, some of those big games. So I expect a lot out of Justin Jackson. I think you'll see um, Joel Berry uh, be a big factor. He could start um, and at least play a lot. You saw him kind of take over that role from Nate Britt last year. And then um, I've always liked Isaiah Hicks. I think he is going to be that third big man and probably share even split minutes with Bryce Johnson and Kenny Meeks. I think it's one of the best front courts in the nation um, with Hicks, Meeks, and Johnson. And then Theo Pinson, we don't, we don't really know much about him. He got injured pretty early in the season last year, and people were talking a lot about him. Um, but he's an athletic guy, could fill in right where uh, J.P. Tokido left off, defensive player who can kind of slash and score. So – I'm excited about what um, Theo Pinson can do as well. So that's what you got. Um, and then, of course, the freshmen. I don't know if you want to get into that. but um, Yeah, well, even before we get into the freshmen, uh, just hearing you list off those names, obviously, you know, those are all returning players. Uh, the people that listen to this podcast probably know those players. But as I hear them, I just hear so much athleticism in, it, athleticism in there. You know, Joe Barry is a bigger point guard. And Theo getting out and running on the wing. You know, Bryce is a big guy, can, you know, do a lot of different things, run the floor. And even Isaiah Hicks, we've seen mostly in off-season play. Last year when we went to the Bahamas, and uh, this year I just, you know, seeing highlights of the, you know, the, the pickup games with some of the pros, just some of his dunks and how athletic, athletic he is. Um, you know, as, as you rolled off all those names, just the athleticism, just it was there. So, you know, can we get back to, to running and being a Carolina team? Yeah, I think with all those guards we have, that's a particularly important. Um, yeah, like you said with Theo, and then you have Paige and, and Britt and Barry who can really push the ball. Um, I don't think there's anyone that's really going to hold us back in terms of running with the ball. So, yeah, I, mean, I think it'll be similar to last year. I mean, you lost Tokido, who's probably the most athletic player, but um, you have guys who are more comfortable in the system. And, um, yeah, watch out for Barry, Theo, and, uh, you know, the freshmen last year who are now sophomores making a big in impact. Roy always talks about, the biggest jump is from their freshman to sophomore year. So you've got to expect a lot of those guys one year in the system. Right. And, and yeah, obviously, I mean, we're, of course, Justin Jackson, you mentioned his end of the season stat or, well, his play. And, uh, of course, we're not the only ones that see that. Other coaches will see that. Is he going to have any trouble uh, just with other teams being a little more focused on him, you think? Yeah, but with UNC, they have so many weapons. I don't think they're going to be able to shy off anyone. You know, um, everyone can score. So he's going he's gonna to be good. I mean, he's got the size. He's got that length. Um, I think he's really worked hard this summer um, to get stronger and to get bat better. And that shot should be more consistent, which will just open, you know, everything else up. So, And he's so versatile. He's got, he's got the, you know, the little – funky runner he can hit he can knock down threes um you know and he's tall enough he can he can get into the post and, and do a little stuff against smaller guys yeah he's a six six eight huge wingspan he has that little baseline floater like you said like his trademark move and then yeah just that three-point shot uh, hopefully this year there can be cons some consistency on the three-point line from shooters 
All right. Now, with the podcast, you kind of answered this already, but we were, have a little debate with the people in the podcast here between Nate Britt and Joel Berry. Do you expect Joel Berry to step up and be, you know, like you said, either a starter or the first backup guard or point guard we have coming over Nate Berry? Uh, yeah, I think I think Joel will, will be ahead of Nate Britt. Um, he's just stronger. He's more a scorer. Uh, he's just a hard nosed defender. Um, I think he pushes the ball better. Um, so yeah, I think just because he scores more, I think he gives him a little more edge than Nate Britt. But Nate Britt's a solid backup. And if you remember back, you know, 2011, 2012, when UNC ran out of point guards, it's so critical of a backup. And Nate Britt's that solid guy who can come in. I think he had huge games. I think it was in the NCAA tournament. He played 20 minutes, 21 minutes. It was, it was huge for UNC. So yeah, I think I think Barry will play more, but. Hopefully, Britt won't be overlooked because he definitely is an asset. All right, and then moving on to recruits. Uh, first, the recruits we have coming this year. Kenny Williams um, had uh, committed to VCU, and then Shaka Smart leaves for Texas. He opens up it again, and, and we win. We get him known more as a sh kind of a shooter. Uh, shooting guard, I believe, is his, his natural position. And then uh, it's Luke May, right? Am I saying that right? Yeah power forward out of North Carolina. So, I mean, we've probably seen highlight videos. I know I have, but uh, have you seen them in person? What do you, what do you know about them? I have not seen them in person, but um, yeah, I mean, Kenny Williams is, is known as a shooter. I think he's going to be able to do a lot more. Um, I saw some stuff after the scrimmages that he's a really solid player and UNC needs that shooting. Um, look for him to be, you know, a three, four-year player. Probably four -year is there player. anybody you would compare him to, previous Carolina players? Maybe like a Shaman Williams or a uh, or a Joseph Forte, kind of an undersized shooting guard who uh, who can knock on the basket. But he also has some moves. He can he can dribble. He's got decent handles. Um, can get to the basket. Uh, pretty versatile. Um, he's he's not like a, a Wayne Ellington or a Sean McCants who are big, kind of six four, six five guards who just have that killer instinct. Um, I think Kenny. Kenny Williams will be more of a spot shooter his first couple of years as his offense develops. Um, and then May. Um, yeah, May is an undersized power forward, 6'7", maybe 6'8". Uh, physical guy. and I, I like him um, just because I know he's going to be a four-year player. He is going to do the dirty work. He's, he can rebound well for his size. He's, you know, people would think he's going to be like a Jackson Simmons. He's a lot better than Jackson Simmons. He can score. He can shoot from outside. In this EYBL league, which is like the Nike AAU circuit, he was he played really well. He dominated against you know top competition. He almost he was one of the top leaders in rebounding and scoring. So it's a guy who can who has kind of a, a knack for getting the ball in the basket. He can rebound, he can pass, knows the game. Um, I think he's gonna be a solid player for the next four years. Obviously, he has a ceiling as far as his athleticism. His size kind of limits what he can do. He's not your 6'10", 6'11", power forward. He can jump out of the gym, but he's going to be solid. I think he knows his limits. And um, I think he'll, he'll, he'll play some this year, but look for him to be more of an impact player uh, moving on uh, sophomore, junior, senior year. Well, and like you said, we have such a not really full you know, uh, front court, but you know, with uh, established guys like Bryce Johnson and – uh, Kennedy Meeks, uh, Isaiah Hicks, even Joel James is a senior this year, right? We've still got him around. Yeah. yeah. So it's 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 not like he's coming in and and is gonna has lots of playing time to take over for somebody either. So yeah, I don't think he'll play too much this year, but um, who knows? All right. So now let's let's move on to the future um, recruiting here. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Uh. <laughs> We saw a streak in, I think it was July, beginning of July, where it was about every day Roy was sending out a, a new offer to somebody. Uh, what's, what's the, I, and I kind of titled this uh, podcast, you know, Recruiting State of the Program for UNC Basketball. Um, but what's, what's going on here? I don't, I don't know if we've ever seen this uh, from UNC Basketball. Yeah, this is, this is odd. I've never seen it before. Um, UNC has, they have 21 offers out right now. Um, and they're not really gaining traction with anybody. And I've talked to some people close to the program, some some other guys in media that I interact with, and and UNC has 
doesn't have a 50% chance of landing anyone that they've offered so far. And that's pretty bleak. Usually they're leading or in the running for a bunch of guys. And, and this year it's, it's not like that. Um, then and a lot of this is for various reasons. I know that's kind of what we can get into here with reasons why UNC basketball recruiting is, is bad right now. And that's a combination of the NCAA issues looming, um, negative recruiting associated with that. And I, I think just it's a, it's a cycle. There's cycles of recruiting. And, and right now, UNC is not hot. Um, I don't know if it's Roy's coaching style, where the program is heading, combination of NCAA stuff and negative recruiting. And you also have the emergence of just Duke and Kentucky and a couple of programs just kind of dominating it. Um, Duke's getting whatever player they want. Same with Kentucky. And that's really affecting UNC's ability um, to kind of pull in these big guys. Because um, usually UNC's right there with Duke and with Kentucky and with Calipari there in Lexington. It's kind of affected UNC um, the last couple of years in recruiting. So it's bleak right now. It's hard, it's, it's hard to find any silver lining. But uh, we can go through some of the players here if you'd like. But, uh, um, yeah, I wish I had more positive news to report on, on the basketball recruiting field. But right now, it's like, I don't even know who UNC is going to get. They have they need to get some people because they're going to lose Paige. They're going to lose Johnson and Joel James. So they'll at least have three scholarships. They could probably sign four or five more because I know they have some walk-ons who are on scholarship walk-ons who just got scholarships who will be graduating as well. Right. And, yeah, there's plenty to talk there with the in, in investigation and, and uh, all the recruits going out or offers going out anyway. But first, is there anybody we have committed? No. All right, not for next year. Now, I know, uh, and this is even looking farther ahead. I'm kind of jumping around. But uh, um, Jalik Felton uh, has is the 2017 class, but he is committed as of right now, right? Yeah, he said something like he's 95% committed. He wants to hear how the NCAA stuff shakes out. But by the time he you know, needs to sign his letter of intent, hopefully the NCAA stuff will be gone. And that's another thing, actually, I failed to mention. Um, the NCAA stuff should be over with, like, sometime in the spring, late spring. I don't know. It's been, it's been pushed back some more. And that's kind of critical if UNC can wait – can get um, some of these players to wait to commit after that period. That kind of puts them in a better spot with them. So all these guys who are committing early, it's, it's not good for Carolina. But if they can get some guys to wait until, you know, March, April, May, that time to commit, they'll have a better shot landing them because it's going to be clear as to the NCAA issues. But, yeah, Jaleek Felton, 2017 guy, awesome player, awesome recruit. He is, he is committed to UNC right now. All right, and update for listeners. I know I've heard you talk about it, but there has been uh, updates to the investigation. You know, I've said on the podcast, we got the notice of allegation. We had 90 days to respond. Kind of right before that 90 days was up, we, or North Carolina comes out and adds a couple of violations, one for its men's soccer and uh, was the other one women's basketball again? Yep. And so that now that pushes it back. So we have another or well, it goes back to the NCAA, right? They can review that and whether they want to revise the NOA. Yeah, right? yeah exactly. And so what if they do that, we get another 90 days, correct? Yes. So it just pushes everything back. So it pushes back. So and now there's been a lot of flack of, of North Carolina throwing people, especially women's basketball, under the bus. Um, but, I mean, I don't know if anybody really looks at it, especially uh, unbiasedly. Of course, if you don't like North Carolina, you're going to say, oh, they're just stalling. They're trying to save men's basketball and all that stuff. And, and if uh, you're a North Carolina um, diehard, you're going to say, you know, oh, they're trying to get it right. They're you know, doing all the right steps. Obviously, you can go either way. But if you look at it, I mean, it's just the smart move, right, to – to kind of push this back, especially coming in as one of the top two teams in men's basketball this year, uh, that nothing can be decided on this season as far as uh, the NCAA banning us from postseason play or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's bad for recruiting pushing it back. You want this right. to be over as soon as possible. Um, so, I mean, I think pushing it back, I think, actually hurts UNC more than anything. I mean, they want this stuff over for football recruiting and for basketball recruiting. Um, I don't think it was going to have an impact on this season in terms of the UNC team, but it's all about recruiting and 
the longer this NCAA stuff looms, the longer teams can negatively recruit against UNC. And it's just, it's bad all the way around. Well, no one ever knows how long the NCAA is going to take to actually, you know, even if they don't revise the, the notice of allegation, that you never know how long they're going to take to decide punishment, right? Yeah, and they've had enough time to do this, but we'll see. <laughs> I hate talking about it. It's just like, it's just so, it's just, you never know what's going to happen. It's been, it's been happening for five years, so I'm just like kind of sick of it. It's just right. whatever. When it's almost more bleak than our, you know, eight and twenty season because you don't know how long it's going to take to turn it around. But you know, with the whole Doherty um, stint in there after after Guthridge and and all that, you know, we had a well two really bad years uh, and especially one bad years. But even those freshmen coming in, the Jawad Williams, Jackie Manuels, Melvin Scotts, who went through that eight and twenty season, you see by their senior year they won a national championship. But uh, with you know, with violations and especially like you're saying, the ne- negative recruiting and all that, you don't know how long it's going to take to to recover from this and, and get it back to where we expect North Carolina basketball to be. Exactly. So, all right, a little bit more positive talk. Hopefully, um, let's talk about some of the bigger names, the guys we've been after for for quite a while, um, and names that you know, people like me who I follow recruiting, but I'm not into it. Uh, will recognize. So, um, you know, there's been a little update on Harry Giles, the number one guy in the in the country. Uh, just go through just a couple of top guys that we've really been after. Um, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, let's start with Giles. Harry Giles, he scheduled his uh, five official visits, which included um, UNC. I think he's going to Wake Forest, UNC. Um, and that's September 25th he'll be there, right? I believe so. I'm going to his yeah. profile right now. Um, yeah, he's got Wake Forest on the 18th of September, UNC September 25th, Kansas October 9th, um, Kentucky October 16th, and Duke October 30th. So Duke has the last official, and I can see him announcing, you know, after that last official, so sometime in late October, um, early November is when it should happen. Uh, I, I think this guy's going to go to Kentucky. He's the, we have, sorry, sorry, I think he's going to go to Duke. We have him as the number one player in the nation with a 24-7 sports composite. Uh, he's an in-state guy from the Triangle, um, High Point, Winston-Salem area, and he's he just transferred to, uh, I think, Oak Hill. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say that. Uh, like I hadn't said that before, but he is transferring yeah, to Oak Hill Academy. Um, now, with that, and I think I also saw that his Kentucky visit will be their, like, uh, Midnight Madness or whatever, their Big Blue uh, Madness or whatever yeah. That date does look like look like it will coincide with that. And so now him transferring, him transferring, and going to that midnight madness. Does that? Does that? I mean, you already said you think he's going to Duke, but does that? Uh, I mean, obviously it hurts us to have him go out of the state. Does it affect, lean him towards Kentucky any more than Duke? I don't think so. I think I think he's going to Duke. Um, I think it's already done deal. Um, so he's going to. Wait, I'm trying to see when his UNC visit. Yeah, he'll be there for a UNC football home game, so that's good. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but, yeah, I mean, this is a guy that UNC would 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 get, would have a great shot of getting if it wasn't for, like, this just negative cloud surrounding UNC. So, um, but let's look back at some other guys. You have Dennis Smith Jr., which is actually my favorite player in the class. He's, like, a talented, real athletic point guard. He's kind of leaning towards um, NC State, I believe. Uh, there's some shoe issues there. Uh, but he could go to Duke as well. Great point guard from Fayetteville. Um, Jason Tatum was a guy who offered. He committed to Duke. Kind of just going through the list here. Well, an update on Denny, Dennis Smith. Um, just tore his ACL. Uh, is out. He's probably going to miss most, if not all, of his senior season then, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing that. Um, that's a shame. But he's he's so good. We watched. I mean, he, his dunk highlights are unbelievable. Um, he's just so athletic. He reminds me. I don't. He just like he's really he's small, but he can just get up and dunk. Um, continuing on, you have uh, Bam Eddie Bio out of Eastern North Carolina. UNC was a pretty good for him, and then he just kind of blew up, and he's got some more offers. He picked a Kentucky offer. He's also the kind of NC State lean as well, um, which is which is bad for Carolina fans if, if they can land. The Wolfpack can land Eddie Bio and Smith. 
I like him a lot too. Real physical, big power forward, real athletic. Um, Seventh Woods is a guy that UNC has some traction with. He's kind of down to um, South Carolina, North Carolina for Seventh Woods. Pretty athletic um, combo guard. His name kind of blew up early off of some highlights. And since then, his stock has kind of come down a little bit. But I think at this point, it's definitely a guy UNC wants, UNC would take. Um, Sasha Kiliai Jones is a, is a Chapel Hill native, goes to school in Virginia. He just committed to Kentucky yesterday. He's the guy UNC offered a, a little ways back. Um, let's see any other big names that were kind of older. Malik Monk, really athletic guard out of Arkansas. I don't think UNC has any traction with him. He's probably going to go to either Arkansas or Kentucky, uh, one of the top players in the class. And then um, – Tony Bradley is a guy UNC offered uh, a little while back out of Florida, 6'10", 235 pounds. There's thought that UNC has the best chance landing him. He's a, he's a really good player. He's a, we have him as a four-star uh, power forward. But I talked with him, um, and he told me he's waiting for other offers. He He's waiting for maybe some bigger schools to enter in, which is it's kind of a shame for UNC fans. But um, – he could be one of the uh, UNC commit, but right now it seems like he's he's looking around more and waiting around for some, some bigger fish to enter the fray. So it's kind of where it stands right now. I mean, there's tons of other names we can go through. I don't know if you want me to list them off, but those are kind of some of the bigger names and where they stand right now. Well, and and again, I'll link to your uh, the the offers page here on your website. Another plug for CarolinaBlue.com uh, of two forty seven sports. Uh, but I'm just looking through here as well, and uh, the combo guard Brandon Robinson says we're, you know, warmer uh, up there. Is there any? I mean, what makes him warmer or more yeah. of a chance there than than any of these other guys? Yeah, I think I think he's a, is another guy. He has a good shot with. He doesn't have as many big time offers. Um, you look at his offer list: Maryland, Georgia State, North Carolina, Louisville, Florida State, um, you know, Stanford, Florida, Miami, schools like that. Yeah, and he's been to North Carolina on a visit. I know that. Um, he's more of one of those recent offers. UNC offered him in uh, early August. So I, I could see I could see him committing at some point, but other schools like I know Louisville's on him pretty hard. He has a lot of choices. So, you know, if this um you know, if UNC can't get in the momentum, I don't see a reason why a guy like Ken would, would want to come here. But UNC does need someone to kind of hop on board to kind of get this train going. And I don't know too much about Robinson as a player, 6'5", 160, kind of a slight shooting guard. We have him as a number 69 overall player, uh, number 10 shooting guard. So, yeah, he, he's definitely a possibility. And um, <clears throat> he's warmer on our site just because I think he's shown some interest and um, probably mentioned UNC in a couple articles and things like that. All right, and I have a couple of questions here emailed in from uh, one of our Patreons over at our patrons over at Patreon.com. If you want to become a patron or a patron, uh, just go over to Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com uh, slash UNC Hoops Talk. But to support the podcast there, but that John, one of our patrons, emailed in and sent a couple of questions. First one he said is, um, our you know. With the commitment of Jalik Felton, um, we already have Nate Britt for two more seasons. We have Joel Berry for possibly three, depending on uh, how well he is playing. Uh, and then the commitment of Jalik Felton. Are we going to have a big-time log jam, or does it hurt our chances with these guys next year, like Dennis Smith, um, Seventh Woods as a, as a combo guard? Uh, I think there's even two more point guards listed up on your site. You know, Is there, is there going to be a log jam if we commit one of those guys? Does it affect Felton you know his commitment joining UNC the next year kind of what what's the point guard situation there yeah I, I think Roy definitely wants to get a point guard in the 2016 class um, and I, it's clear that he's willing to play two at a time he's good at UNC's good at kind of sharing playing time in terms of point guards and it's very important they get a get a couple in Per, or get at least one in per class or, you know, every other class because um, he doesn't want to have a situation where he doesn't have a point guard. So I don't think that affects it. I think if any one of these top guys commits, they know um, they're good enough to play. We didn't take a point guard in um, in the 2015 class. So there's a little gap there. So they definitely want one in 2016. And um, 
And then 2017, they have Jaleek Felton. Jaleek Felton's kind of a combo guard, too, so he can play off the ball and be more of a scorer as well as handle the ball. So I don't think there's really a, a log jam issue um, with that. All right. And before we get off Felton, there was, at least over social media, he kind of debunked it, but there was a lot of talk of, I don't even know what it was. He took down UNC stuff off his Instagram and, and said he was recruitment was open again. He was talking to other schools and all that. And again, he debunked it, said, um, you know, they were talking to him. He wasn't talking to anybody else. But uh, do we need to be worried about him? Uh, unless something, you know, big comes down against North Carolina, we have to be worried about everybody. But, uh, you know, do we need to be worried about him decommitting or anything before he gets to school? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it depends on the NCAA stuff. But I don't think so. I think um, just the fact that he's, you know, his uncle is Raymond Felton and UNC's been on since the beginning is a good sign. Um, yeah, I look at his Twitter right now. It says he's a UNC verbal commit. There's a lot of time between now and then. So as long as NCAA stuff gets resolved, they can bring in a couple guys in 2006, 2016. I think UNC would be good to go with him. And it's big to get him on early. All right. All right, and then John emailed in a, another question, this one about big men, um, and all, all the big men, you know, power forward centers offered for next year. Is there, there's kind of three parts here. Is there anyone that we have a better chance of getting? Uh, is there one that fits Roy's better than the others? And uh, is there any that remind you of former Tar Heel players? <laughs> okay, well, actually, one guy that I think UNC has a decent chance of getting is this foreign guy from Finland. Laurie Markkinen, it's good to mention him. He is he is visiting, and Roy plans to visit him in Finland. So that's one guy. He's a 6'11", 225-pound, um, kind of a, your, your typical European-style big man, uh, pretty athletic. We have him as a four-star composite, five, and 24-7 Sports has him as a five-star. So that's one guy to look out for. Um, Does he have a lot of offers from other people? So his three visits are – Arizona, Utah, and North Carolina. And his dad played for Roy at Kansas for one year. There's a, there's a little connection there. Uh, a lot of people think he's going to go to Arizona, but, hey, he's taking a visit to UNC. Um, so that could be a guy to look out for. Uh, I think any other year, I don't know if UNC would get involved with someone outside the United States, but with so many offers out, there's the, the sense that um, UNC really needs to um, get on there. Uh, big man, Harry Giles, um, Tony Bradley, and then some other guys I don't know too much about. You have Jared Allen, who's a power forward out of Texas. Dewan Huell out of Florida. Um, Winye Gab Gabrielle out of um, Massachusetts. Those are some of the big men. Marquise Bolden out of Texas. Um, he's more of your big-time center. And then, I don't think UNC has gained any traction with any of his guys other than the, uh, the Finnish guy and, and Bradley. Bradley has taken his official visit to UNC. Of course, Giles has been to UNC a lot, but those other guys have never been to UNC, never checked it out. They have offers, but um, until they take visits and until you see more about them, I don't think UNC is really in there with them. Well, and, and obviously Harry Giles is going to fit into anybody's system as, as good as he is, but is there anybody else kind of specifically – uh, that would, you know, maybe fit a niche into Roy's system? Um, I mean, with big men, I don't think there's a certain type Roy looks for. He likes guys that can run the floor, but then he takes Kenny Meeks, who's a kind of a slower guy. Um, this Winye Gabriel guy is super athletic. I watched tape on him recently. Um, Jared Allen out of Texas. Marquise Bolden out of Texas are kind of bigger center type um, type big men, um, more in the mold of Kenny Meeks and uh, maybe Sean May, those kind of guys. So, all right. Well, let me uh, check. I did throw out a a thing onto Twitter, see if there was any questions. I'll double check. Pretty much the only question we got in is why can't we land any? But uh, <laughs> we've we've kind of gone through that. So I I think we've. We've kind of covered it, hopefully, for another year uh, as far as recruiting. Hopefully, everything starts to turn up in the, in the sense that uh, we get the guys we need to, to keep the tradition going at North Carolina. But, uh, Ross, I just want to thank you for coming, taking part of your vacation out. I don't know if we said that before, but uh, 
taking out your time out of your vacation to come onto the podcast and help us out here and, and talk through. I really appreciate it. Yeah, anytime. And uh, just uh, again, I'll put it in the in the description all the links uh, to follow you and get to your website and the the articles and pages that we talked about in the in the podcast. But uh, just uh, let everybody know again where they should find you at. Yeah, check out our site carolinablue.com or northcarolina.247sports.com. And on Twitter, uh, follow me at boss underscore martin two four seven. And there's there's constant content coming out of there. Uh, again, I, you know, I went onto the site just to look at who we'd offered and stuff. It's it's all there, so uh, definitely need to plug them. And and thank you again, Ross, uh, for everybody else out there. Until next week or next month, as we get closer to basketball season, uh, we will see you then. I am your host, Dan Dewitt, and uh, all my links will be in the description as well. But uh, uh, thanks for listening, and until next time, go heels. <laughs>